Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to install something on our Predator generator that I think is going to make a world of difference. Uh, a few days ago I went through and I bought the Nash fuel system and basically that's going to convert our Predator generator to where it will run natural gas or propane. Since we're going to use it as a camping generator, I'm going to set it up for propane. The one reason I chose the Nash fuel system is I still was able to keep the original carburetor so if I'm running gasoline through it it still would have the electronic solenoids on the top and everything if I bought an aftermarket carburetor it would not have that another nice thing about the Nash as you can see this is where the fuel is actually introduced into the airstream of the engine and you can see it's only a quarter of an inch there's no real modifications that needs to happen inside the case but as you can see let me see if I can pull that in so as you can see there's two different sizes the larger size and it's even it's stamped on the top it says carburetor side too so this side will be facing the carburetor this side will be your air box and it just squeezes in between the two so it just basically all it does is offset your air box by a quarter of an inch that's the only real modification that's done to this motor. The other part of this setup is the Garrison low pressure regulator. How this actually works, when a vacuum is produced here, it actually pulls on the vacuum, which pulls on a lever and allows the, the propane to come up and out of here. The good thing about this is if your motor would ever stop running the vacuum goes away and the propane seals up there's people out there that would just take or could just take a hose run it right to your air cleaner tap and drill into that run a barbecue regulator on it and that would work but th there's no safety feature on that so what happens on on that scenario there is if the motor for some reason would stop your gas will still keep building up that's not a good situation to just have gas running unabated that's why we decided to go this route the one thing i will caution you on when you buy the nash it only comes with this garrison the venturi some bolts clamps and some hoses you will need to buy you a low pressure regulator and then step it up to a three quarter inch fitting here. The reason they don't do that because it also is sold as natural gas. Natural gas, you don't have to have this regulator on it. This is only if you're doing a propane setup. So let's get a jump in here and we'll start showing you what we're doing. So now we have the air box off. Like I said, we're just gonna put that right in there. There is a gasket already on the carburetor side. We'll just bunt the air box up to this and put it all back together. So before you install the spacer, you actually need to take these, because we're adding a quarter of an inch to this, you actually need to take a pair of pliers or something and screw, unscrew these studs out about a quarter of an inch so you can get your same nuts put back on there. So it'll actually go like that and then the air box will go on the outside. Before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a small hole here. So what's going to happen is my fuel line is going to come out here. I'm going to run it underneath here. I'm going to bring it out right here. I'm going to run it right up to here. And it'll just attach right here or sit right up in here. And then when I get ready to run it, I'll just pull it because it'll be on quick disconnects. I'll just plug it in and it'll be ready to go. So. Uh, let me pull you in here and show you what it all looks like so this is the generator side as you can see it's pretty 
pretty easy. Right there's the adapter plate. Runs into the fuel line. I drilled a hole down in here. That comes up here. I'll take that, clip it onto onto my fuel line off of my regulator, and this thing should run. So let's get the regulator side done. Okay, so now we're ready to do the bottle side of it. So a quick little walk around here. On the back side, you'll have two vents. We'll actually take them, cover them caps off right now. I will put the caps back on after we're done running, just so nothing makes a nest in here or anything. Right here is your prime button. So we'll do that when we get ready to start it. We'll prime it for a couple seconds and then we'll hit the start button. So pretty straightforward, just like putting a bottle or putting your grill on the bottle. They also send you some fuel line too, which I've used some of it already, but get the rest of it off. As you can see, I put a quick disconnect on the bottle side, and I put a quick disconnect on the motor side. The reason I did that was I don't want anything coming in here making a nest. And if we just had an open side, if we if I'd have put the male side on, I don't know if you can see through there. That's just open, so there's nothing. So something could crawl up in there and make a nest. I didn't want to do that. So the next thing is to make a hose from here to here. Okay, now that we've got it all set up, did go through, make sure all your fittings are tight, take soapy water, make sure you have no leaks. So then what we're going to do is turn on the tank. I hear gas that's a good thing when I push that when you're running propane or natural gas you do not have to choke it which on the photo generator will be over on the start that's actually choke you don't need to do that you just need to turn it over to run hit that a couple times make sure your eco, coast, uh, eco mode is off let's hit start under a load and see what it looks like or what it sounds like. So we got my little heater hooked up now. It's like 1700 watts, 1500 watts, something like that. We'll turn it on, we'll see what it sounds like when we go up. So this is setting one. 
handled that pretty good. I'm not setting two. Didn't even hardly make a sound on that change over. Now that was running not on eco mode. Let's switch it over to eco mode, see what it sounds like here. Eco mode's down a little. Some of the advantages of going to propane, I don't have to worry about fuel going bad or anything like that. I don't have to worry about the stay bill. But with this little conversion kit, it allows me to go back and forth. So if I need to run gas, I just unhook it there, fill the gas tank back up, and away we go. It doesn't notice any difference. If I want to run propane, you've seen how easy it is. I just clip it on the clip in my hoses, and away we go that way. I don't have it set up. We don't have natural gas here, so there's no reason for me to even attempt to do the natural gas. Probably what I'll end up doing is on the front of my camper, I'll run a tap off on that because this generator lives in the bed of our truck. And so when we're out boondocking or whatever, I can plug it in right there. There's two important things to note on this. One, the propane will not produce the same amount of wattage as the gasoline does because it's the difference in the BTU between the gas and the propane you're only talking you know, 100, 200 watts at max wide open. To me, I, I can deal with that. The other thing that you can really notice on this is the smell. You don't smell the gas, you don't get the nauseous fumes or anything like that. Also, running propane should help with the life of the plugs. So that's the end of this Predator update. I do have a contractor style generator that I've had for many years. I will be doing a complete carburation change on that simply because the gas tank is rusted. Instead of messing around trying to put a new fuel tank on it, I bought the carburetor for that one for like $26 off of Amazon. And I'm just gonna do a video on converting that one over to. This kit here was $130 on Amazon. And then I had right around $45 or so and extra parts and stuff. So give you an idea on this conversion. For under 200 bucks, you'd be running propane and that's even setting up the drop on my camper. Hopefully this inspired you guys to maybe look at alternative fuel for your generator too. If, if you're like us and you only use your generator every now and then, this is a very wise choice. If you guys found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up. That way we know you guys like the content that we're sharing with you guys. And hopefully see you guys on the next video. Thanks. Bye.